would see it. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. How come he doesn't, in, in this one here, uh, Pastor, yeah. he says, uh, he who abides in the doctrine of Christ as both the Father and the Son. Yeah. Why don't we say that in the Holy Spirit? Don't know. But for some reason, the Holy Spirit did you not. Uh, I would think you got to have the Holy Spirit in the heart to have the others. I think because it, because see, it's the doctrine of Christ. These false teachers didn't didn't believe. They weren't saying that Christ was full of the Holy Spirit. They were just they just denied that He was God. Probably that's why. He says, if "You see me, you see the Father." Amen. I know. Amen, brother. Amen. Yep. Kind of writing on the wall there. Kind of I would say so. Yeah. So anybody, anybody, here's what, here's what I want you to understand. Anybody that comes to your door, I don't care what religion it is. I don't care what it is. I don't care if they're carrying a Bible, have a tie and a suit. I don't care. The first question you see, when they're all done, and this, this is how you handle these people, I'm telling you from experience. When they knock your door, be kind, be compassionate. Listen to them. Wouldn't you want that? If you knock someone's door, wouldn't you want them to respond kindly and listen to what, you, what we have to say? Be kind to them. Let them talk. Let them finish. Because after that, they have nothing to say. They have a plan memorized. They, you know, they want an argument. I don't give any person an argument when they knock my door. Now what? So when you're done, especially if they're a cult, just ask them one question. Do you believe that Jesus Christ is God in the flesh? If they say no, they're, then they're, there's, there's your answer. And say, well, you know, I'm, I've, what I'll do is, say, you know, I feel sorry for you. Why? I said, because you know what? He's God in the flesh. And according to Philippians, one day, take it to Philippians chapter 2, it says, one day, every knee is going to bow to this name who you deny. And everybody's going to say, he's Lord. God to the Father. So one day you're going to confess Him. So the one you deny, you're going to face one day and bow at His knee. And that'll get their attention and say, but there's hope here for you. And then give them the God. And the second question I ask them is, what are you going to do with your sin? And they look at you and go, hmm. Yeah, what are you going to do with your sin? The Bible says the wage of sin is death. You're going to die one day in your sin. How are you going to take care of that? What's the, what's the answer to your sin? All the cults have no answer for that. They're thinking good works and all that kind of stuff. See, always point them back to sin and the Savior. Don't go outside of that realm. Because once you get outside of that realm... Then that's where they want you to go. And they, all they want to do is start a theological argument with you. The last time I witnessed to Jehovah's Witness, I went down that route with him like that. And to the point where he said, wow, you really know what you're talking about. He says, and I said, yes, and I wish I had what you had. I said, I wish you had what I have. I have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And I know if I died today, I know I'm going to heaven. And he just shook his head and they walked off. So there's falsehood out there. Just recognize it. Amen. All right. Verse 10 says, If anyone comes to you and does not bring this doctrine, do not receive him into your house, nor greet him. Now, you got to understand, biblical culture in that day. In John's day, the philosophers... And the teachers and even the pastors relied on God's people for lodging and financial help. That was their custom. Even Jewish custom was like that. Let's say if I was a stranger and I walked into a Jewish town and I didn't have a place to stay, all I had to do was knock any Jewish door and say, hey, could you help? I don't have a place to stay. They would welcome them in, then let them stay the night and feed them and take care of them. That was their culture. So that was a normal thing. So that's why John is saying, hey, if somebody knocks your door and they're saying, giving you falsehood, uh, don't practice your culture here. <laughs> you say bye-bye, see ya. Because it was a natural habit. You know, when you're raised like that, it's just a natural thing. You do it automatically. Uh, look at Acts chapter 18. Do you think also... 
church? What's that? Do you think that also pertains to someone from your church who comes over to your house and they start trying to spread false gospel? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And then it's saying to disfellowship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree with that. Doctrine's important. You don't, you don't want to let anybody in your house teaching you false doctrine, right? In Acts chapter 18, look at verse 2 and 3. Well, let's start with verse 1. After these things, Paul departed from Athens and went into Corinthians. It's Corinth. And he, see that? He found a certain Jew named Aquila, born in Pontus, who recently came from Italy with his wife Priscilla, because Claudius had commanded all the Jews to depart from Rome, and he came to them. So because he was of the same trade, he stayed with them and worked for our occupation. They were tent makers. See the hospitality there? He came into the city. Hey, we found the same trade. He, so they took him in. That, that was the custom of that day. So since John knew that was the custom of that day, John was saying in our text, he says, hey, listen. You, he says, you don't help false teachers and prophets when they come to your door. You don't support them. You don't take care of them whatsoever. And, and, and so uh, that is a common thing during that day. So it's time to go. We'll, uh, we'll discuss this more next week.